Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and quick overview of the fastest desktop processor in the world. The name. The name is the Intel Core i7-3970X Extreme Edition. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box of course and if you're familiar with Intel's naming scheme, the X at the end indicates it's an Extreme Edition processor. Uh, you might be familiar with a K at the end of um, some processors such as this one right here. This is a 2600K. It means it's unlocked and you can overclock the processor basically to your heart's content. Um, now one thing about the difference between the two of these, uh, this is a 2600K which means it's based on the Sandy Bridge micro -arch architecture. The 3970X over here is also based based on Sandy Bridge microarchitecture, -arch and when they took it from the LG1155 uh, socket and they uh, introduced the Extreme Enthusiast socket, which is 2011, uh, basically they took this processor and they made it into a beast of a processor with the 3960X originally, which I have a box of right there, see? And then uh, now is the 3970X, which has a few upgrades from the 3960X. Now one other thing I should point out, Right now we currently have Ivy Bridge processors and that's a, a newer microarchitecture. So in case you're wondering if a processor like this one, an i7-3770K, is going to be faster than a 3970X simply because it is based on slightly newer architecture, that is not the case. The 3970X is the best of the best. It's based on the Socket 2011 platform and that is the enthusiast platform. And typically for Intel, at least over the past uh, five or six years, their enthusiast platforms have had a very long lifespan. They've been the mainstream, or uh, they've been the enthusiast platform for typically three to four years running. And so that being said, um, don't worry if you go for this processor and somebody says, oh, it's not Ivy Bridge, it's not good, it is still good. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Of course, you got some uh, specs and some specific UPC codes and stuff like that on the side of the box here, various languages here. What is this information? I've never actually read this information. It doesn't matter because it's not in English, so I can't read it. Uh, here on the back, you can see that this box contains an Intel processor designed for use in a desktop PC, the full text of a three-year warranty, uh, installation instructions, and the system requirements for Intel uh, hyperthreading technology, Intel Turbo Boost, are contained in the booklet enclosed. So there's the processor, of course. A little bit more info there on the back. Really not a whole lot to look at as far as the outside of the box goes, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And uh, another thing to point out, since this is an Extreme Edition processor, since it's on Intel's Enthusiast platform, and since enthusiasts typically are not too fond of the, uh, the stock heatsink fans that will often come with uh, their box processors, because this actually has a heatsink fan in there, um, but they have not included a heatsink fan, you may notice. So the reason for that is, well, pretty much the assumption is that any, if they did include a heatsink fan with this processor, uh, an enthusiast would chuck it out and get an aftermarket heatsink fan or go with a water cooling setup or something like that. Uh, next up, of course, we have the processor itself, which is in this brown little packaging here. And there we go. And then, of course, we have a booklet, again, with some more information. You do get a three-year manufacturer warranty from Intel, and you even get this little sticker right there. These are hard to come by. That's the gray or dark gray and black Extreme Edition Core i7 sticker, so you should definitely put that on your case so folks know what kind of processor you are running inside. So here's the CPU itself. The actual CPU die is located beneath the metal piece that you see on top. That's actually a heat spreader. Helps protect the die and uh, this is also where you would apply your thermal paste to make sure you have good thermal conductivity between the heat spreader and whichever heat sink fan you tend to go with. Here's a look at the bottom. Uh, this is an LGA socket 2011 processor. Um, LGA 2011 I should say. So there are actually 2011 individual contact pads right there. They're gold contacts. If you're handling this processor, make sure you don't touch those contacts. Again, uh, Socket 2011, this is a six-core or hexa-core processor. Uh, it does feature Intel's hyper-threading technology, so you get six physical cores and 12 logical cores that can be addressed by your operating system. Based on the 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge architecture, 32 nanometer lithography, features Intel Turbo Boost 2.0. 2 so here's another difference between this processor and the 3960X, for example. Uh, this one has a base clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz and a turbo boost clock speed of four gigahertz, whereas the 3960X runs at 3.4 and 3.9. Of course, since it is unlocked, you can overclock it beyond that, hence the Extreme Edition moniker. Uh, features a 15 megabyte L3 cache, 
64-bit instruction set, so I do recommend a 64-bit operating system uh, for this processor, of course. Features some new instruction set extensions such as SSE 4.2 and AVX. Also includes virtualization, VTX, and VTD technology. Uh, it has a, a DMI, or direct media interface, so if you guys have been following uh, uh, processor and uh, personal computer technology for a while. Uh, you, there used to be a Northbridge and a Southbridge chipset that would be a part of your motherboard. The Northbridge is now pretty much integrated into the processor itself. So DMI is the direct media interface and that's what it uses to communicate with the Southbridge chipset. Chances are if you're running this processor you're going to be installing it on an X79 chipset motherboard. Although there are certain uh, versions of the uh, actual server chipsets that are also compatible uh, and that's going to give you a DMI transfer speed of 5 giga transfers per second. Uh, you also have 150 watt TDP and that is the second difference between this processor and the 3960X. 3960X TDP as you can well, actually, it's not listed here on the box. It is listed on the box for this one, but 3960X has a 130 watt TDP versus the 150 watt TDP of this one. So uh, you do need uh, it's uh, basically some additional uh, thermal dissipation in order to uh, cool this, this CPU. And it's going to operate within a higher thermal envelope. Voltage range of between 0 0.6 volts and 1.35 volts. And uh, one of the awesome features of this processor, 40 total PCI Express lanes. They are fully PCI Express Gen 2 compatible. Uh, they also have PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility. That's going to vary based on the motherboard you have it installed on. Uh, I've worked with the 3960X and I have had it functioning on Gen 3 uh, pretty, without too much difficulty, but just bear in mind, it's only officially designated for Gen 2. Uh, with Gen 3, you might need to do a little bit more tinkering or tweaking, or you might want to make sure you get a motherboard that you've confirmed will give you the PCI Express Gen 3 support. But the 40 PCI Express lanes is what makes this a real beast, uh, especially if you're going to be doing uh, workstation type activities, because you do get a massive amount of um, bandwidth available from your PCI Express slots up to the processor. Uh, also another reason why it's really popular for instance with uh, two-way, three-way and uh, particularly three-way and four-way Crossfire X or SLI implementations. Uh, finally we have memory supports and um, I didn't really show you guys this side of the box which I probably should have because it's one of the more uh, important things that it says. Uh, but it does support four channel DDR3 memory so um, make sure you buy your memory in kits of four. Generally speaking you'll be able to find that set up. Uh, supports up to 64 gigabytes total so that may basically means um, 64 gigs depending on the type of DIMMs you're using and depend depending on the type of the motherboard. Typically motherboards will have either four DIMM slots open or eight DIMM slots open. Uh, and you do have DDR3 speeds of 1066, 1333, and 1600 supported. Total bandwidth available uh, for the quad channel memory is 51.2 gigabytes per second. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Intel Core i7-3970X processor designed for use on Intel's enthusiast Socket 2011 platform. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.